This week we're comparing two different sock heels, the short row heel and the peasant heel. The peasant heel is often referred to as an afterthought heel. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. In July, I did a series of videos on top-down heel flap and gusset sock construction and how to modify that type of sock for a good fit. And this week marks the first in a series of similar videos for short row heels and peasant heels. These two socks have a lot in common in terms of their shape, size, and the way they fit, but they're very different in the way that they're constructed during the course of knitting a sock. So let's take a closer look at these two heel styles and see how they compare. So here are two sock swatches. One is knit with short rows and the other is a peasant heel. Notice that they look the same in both directions. That means the heel can be knit exactly the same whether you are knitting top down or bottom up. Each of these stitches uses 50% of the sock stitches for the heel. And with both of these, the heel narrows at the same rate until there are about a third of the original stitches remaining. When laid flat, the heels are trapezoid in shape. When laid in the opposite direction, then they are more or less square. The depth of the heel is 50% of the heel width. So an eight inch sock will have a heel four inches wide and two inches deep. This is a fairly shallow heel, which is why many people find this type of sock to be uncomfortably snug across the heel diagonal or impossible to even get on their foot. The depth of these heels is directly related to their width, unlike a heel flap, which can just be knit to any length regardless of its width. So let's look at the construction process for each type of heel. Even though the two types of heels are identical in shape and dimensions, the construction methods are very different. When knitting cuff down, the short row heel is worked following the completion of the leg. 50% of the stitches are used to knit the heel, and the heel is knit flat using short rows. With the standard hourglass short row heel, the first half of the heel is worked with increasingly shorter short rows, each row one stitch shorter than the previous row, until one third of the center stitches remain. And then the second half of the heel is worked with increasingly longer short rows. This process of stacking the longer short rows on top of the shorter short rows is what creates the heel cup. Once the heel is complete, working in the round is resumed for the duration of the foot. The peasant heel is inserted into the sock after the tube for the entire leg and foot have been completed. Now there are two variations on setting up the peasant heel. One calls for some advanced planning, while the other requires no advanced planning. We'll call the one that requires advanced planning a forethought heel, and the other an afterthought heel. Regardless of which variation is used, the resulting heel is exactly the same and no one will be able to tell which variation you use. Many knitters refer to any peasant heel as an afterthought heel even when they are planning ahead for it. Therefore, the heel many knitters refer to as an afterthought heel is actually the heel that this video is describing as a forethought peasant heel. After the leg is complete, the working yarn is dropped and waist yarn is joined. 50% of the stitches are worked with waist yarn on a double pointed needle. The waist yarn is dropped and you return to the starting end of the double pointed needle where the working yarn is picked up again and those stitches are worked a second time using the working yarn and working needle. Once the heel location has been marked, the tube is continued to create the foot. In this sock, you can see where the heel is planned for with this yellow yarn. In the second variation, the entire tube for the leg and foot are worked, and the decision about the placement of the heel is determined at the time the heel is knit. So my plan is to insert it right here. To knit the peasant heel for the version set up with waist yarn, the waist yarn is removed and the live stitches above and below the gap are captured.
For the version without waist yarn, a single stitch is snipped at the center of the heel location and the stitches are picked out along that row. The live stitches above and below the gap are captured. Regardless of how the peasant heel was set up, the total number of stitches will be twice the number of the stitches released. So if the heel is 32 stitches across, you will now have 64 stitches on the needle because you will have these 32 stitches on the needle and these 32 stitches on the needle. The heel is then worked in the round just like a sock toe, decreasing at each end of each half of the heel every other round until one third of the stitches remain. The heel is then grafted shut. Notice how this heel is knit exactly like a standard wedge toe for a sock. With a peasant heel, you'll have no interruption in the striping pattern as it continues down the leg and into the foot. With a short row heel, the striping pattern will be interrupted in order to work the heel and then resumed after the heel is completed. So this may or may not be an aesthetic issue depending on the striping pattern that your sock has. You can of course overcome this issue by joining a, a contrast yarn or joining yarn from a different point in the ball in order to work the short row heel. When worked according to the standard heel instructions for either type of heel, these heels are quite shallow and some people will find them uncomfortably snug. In fact, some people will not even be able to get the sock on their foot. I'm one of those people. So what happens if you finish the sock and you find that the heel doesn't fit? Well, for short row heels, you will have to rip back the sock until right before the heel is begun in order to make any modifications. With a peasant heel, depending on whether you did the afterthought or forethought version, you may be able to get away with just ripping out the heel and making your modifications as you rework the heel. In some circumstances, if you have knit a forethought peasant heel, you will have to rip the entire sock back to right before um, the, the placement of the waist yarn. There is no knitting technique that I know of that is best for all knitters in all situations, and that includes heel types. The heel that is best for you depends on your knitting preferences, the foot that you have to fit, the specific sock pattern or stitch pattern you're using, and your personal aesthetics. Ultimately, the short row heel takes the most planning in order to get a good fit, but has perhaps the most options for modifications. The afterthought peasant heel takes the least amount of planning. The short row heel and forethought peasant heel allow for more flexibility when there is a difference uh, in circumference between the leg and the foot. Because you know where the heel will be, you can plan for those sizing differences as you knit the sock. The afterthought heel is the least flexible when it comes to those sizing differences between the leg and the foot, but it is the most flexible when the modification is to is to widen the heel. In that case, you only have to rip back the heel to widen it. With a forethought peasant heel, you have to rip back the entire foot in order to place the waist yarn again to make it wider. In the coming weeks, I'll be posting videos on how to make modifications to short row heels and peasant heels in order to achieve a better fit. If you have any questions or comments about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below. As I add more videos to this series, you will be able to see all of them in the playlist above. And if you'd like to see all of my sock related videos, I have a playlist for that down here. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, you can hover over my face and then click on the subscribe button. Or if you're on a mobile device, you can tap on my face and then hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.